welcome to episode four of Simply Great Relationships podcast. We're so glad that you could join us today. I'm Marina Varon and this is Meredith Silversmith and we are excited to bring you this episode on what not to do in your relationship. Uh, make sure that you stay tuned until the very end because we've got a really, really great bonus for you today uh, and we will tell you how to get it at the end of the episode. Yep. So we always like to talk about what makes relationships go right, right? Mm -hmm. Like what to do, what will help, positive things, framing things in the positive, but today we have to go down a different path. We've called this episode How to Get Divorced because if you follow these anti-tips, you could be heading down that path. So we want to give you the info today on what not to do. Uh, so we've touched on this before, this concept of these four um, qualities of communication that are really damaging to relationships. So to name them, they're called the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right? Credit to John Gottman. Um, so there are four qualities of communication that don't bode well for your relationship. To briefly review them, if you didn't listen to episode one yet, um, criticism. So criticism, an example, would be saying, you're, you're so lazy, you never want to do anything, you're always just laying on the couch, you never help me, I don't understand. That would yep. be critical, right? Second one, defensiveness. Goes hand in hand with criticism, mm -hmm. right? Somebody uh, kind of attacks you, mm -hmm. you're not just going to stand there and be like, yes, bring it on, <laughs> I'm a Zen Buddha, I'll just deflect all... Of it, um, you're gonna get a little defensive. You're gonna say, "That's not me. That, mm -hmm. That's you." Mm -hmm. Well, y you think I forgot your birthday? You forgot uh, our anniversary. You forgot my mom's birthday. You forgot this. You forgot that. I'm not the one who's forgetful. That that's you. Right. Defensiveness. They go hand in hand. Um, the third one is stonewalling. So this is when somebody is really overwhelmed and flooded during an argument and they've shut down. So they're quiet, they've zoned out, they're staring off into space, they're looking at their phone, they're just sitting and disengaging from the conversation in a non-constructive way. Um, that's what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And then contempt being the fourth and most damaging horseman. Contempt is the mean stuff, yelling, cursing, name-calling, sarcasm, um, Making belittling fun of the other person, belittling, patronizing, all stuff like that. So that, you know, we don't have to give an example of that, that you can imagine. Stuff that makes you cringe is contempt. Um, so these are the four horsemen, really important to be aware of. Um, they exist in every relationship. I think that's a really important mm -hmm. thing. So it's not that to have a healthy relationship, there's got to be a 100% absence of the four horsemen. It's not realistic. But they should be really, really minimized, and contempt really shouldn't happen. Contempt yeah. does, does not need to be present. Um, you know, just to share a little bit about maybe how we've battled with the horsemen in our own relationships. Um, I guess for me, I'd probably be a fan of defensiveness. Me too. <laughs> so if my husband pointed something out to me that I did that, you know, bothered him or, you know, he wanted to be different. And I, I can't say for sure that he was using his I statements and, you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. I felt criticized in the moment, but I would absolutely say, I didn't do that. That's not, that's not what I did. That's not what I meant. You heard, you heard me wrong. You, yeah. <laughs> you are confused. That's, that's not at all what happened. Let me, let me tell you what went down. So that, I could own that. That was my struggle. Yeah, I think I can really own the the defensiveness also. I wonder if that comes from both <laughs> of us being really precious only children. It could who, be. Who never do anything wrong. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm really good at, at the that's not me, that's you. Mm -hmm. And the, um, you know, George would say something to me that I internalized as critical and I'd be like, well, mm -hmm. let me pull out the Rolodex of, <laughs> you know, my rebuttals and yeah. get really defensive. And 
I would also say I'm pretty good at serving my defensiveness with a side of criticism. Yeah. Uh, you know, just throwing a jab in there for, for good measure or for bad measure, really. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I have, like, very actively worked on, you know, mm -hmm. like that 80s aversion technique of the rubber band <laughs> <laughs> on the wrist. I, I, I really, like, try to catch myself because, you know, like, defensiveness is a feeling in your body. Yeah. Like, you know when you're getting defensive, it's almost like, oh, like... And I've really tried to be very mindful of that feeling and just taking a little ownership to de-escalate it because I know what defensiveness leads to. It leads to tit for tat and yeah. not going anywhere, wasting good energy and not going anywhere. Yeah, and I think for me too, it's something I've worked on and the way that I've really gotten past it for the most part is just remembering the message it sends to Tom. Right? Mm -hmm. Remembering that if, if he's bringing a concern to me, and I'm responding with defensiveness, I'm essentially telling him, your concern doesn't matter. Yeah. What you're, what you're upset about or what you're concerned about doesn't matter to me. It's not important to me, and I don't care. So that's by no means a message I want to mm -hmm. send. So that's really helped me to work on it. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really <laughs> great thing to be mindful of mm -hmm. is um, what what is my partner trying to tell me in this moment mm -hmm. and not make it so much about, like, you but yep. but really listening to your partner and to their thought need feeling mm -hmm. in the moment definitely and I think it's okay to say can you say that to me differently yes I think that's a really really important thing if your partner says something to you that hits you the wrong way give them the benefit of the doubt right mm -hmm. give it a second and say you know what that kind of felt a little critical. Could you try to say that again? Can you say it to me differently? I want to mm -hmm. hear what you're saying, right? I want to understand yeah. where you're coming from, and I want to hear you. So can you tell me yeah. in a different way? And I almost feel like that's like waving a little white flag and reducing defensiveness mm -hmm. to be able to, to say, like, let, let's have a do-over here. Mm -hmm. let's, yeah. uh, let's say it in a way that's going to make both of us... Uh, receive and give the message that we're actually going for. Yeah, definitely. So there are reasons why we resort to using the four horsemen, right? It's not it's that we wake up in the morning and we're like, how can I criticize my husband today? Uh, um, <clears throat> what do you think about that? Uh, of course. Like, I don't think people are inherently jerks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I, this is what I always tell my couples, and I think this even, like, rang true for me, uh, for a long time, like, I think the four horsemen are a bad tool to express a good need. Oh, yeah. Or to express a good feeling. Oh, I like or, that. Like, it, they're, they're a bad coping tool to get to a really important and really good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I really think people resort to them because they don't have better coping tools. And, like, unfortunately, I think some of these are a little bit ingrained in language. Yeah. Um, and people feel like the louder I yell, the more critical I get, the more my message will get across. Right. You know, like, it's really dysregulating and feels really horrible when you really want to express a feeling and you feel like it's not being heard. Mm hmm And sometimes, again, like, we're not using the best, most constructive tool. We're not being strategic, essentially. Right. We're yeah. using a really poor strategy mm -hmm. to try to meet a really important need. Yeah. And we're, we're using what comes easily in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So we're saying... I'm, frust I'm frustrated. <clears throat> I want you to know I'm frustrated, so I'm going to show you in any way I can. But that's not going to get the outcome that you want. Exactly. Um, and I think people really resort to these when they feel flooded. Yeah. Uh, again, I mean, we talked about flooding in uh, episode two. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about it in, actually in episode one. Also, mm -hmm. uh, when we're feeling flooded, we're not ourselves. Like, our... Uh, we're, we have our claws out. Yeah. And we have our claws out because we're feeling all types of ways inside, but uh, we're not using that rational good part of our brain. We're, we're using the part of our brain that can really sabotage us. Yeah. I mean, essentially, you're in fight or flight mode, right? Yeah. So if you're in fight or flight mode and you're looking at your partner, you're looking at them as an enemy. 
Mm-hmm. That's the reality, right? Yeah. So when you're flooded, everyone's an enemy. Everything is dangerous. Yeah. So we're going to misperceive. We're looking through a filter of danger. That's kind of how I explain it. Mm-hmm. So you're going to see things more negatively than perhaps mm-hmm. they were intended. So it makes sense if you're looking for danger and you hear criticism, you're going to respond with defensiveness, right? Or contempt. If you mm-hmm. really want to up the ante, you go to contempt. So being flooded and being able to manage your flooding in a healthy way is a really great way to avoid using the four horsemen. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk more about that later. Yeah. So I think that's a, a really important piece. Um, what... What do the four horsemen invite from your partner? We kind of talked about that, right? So criticism invites defensiveness. Mm -hmm. Defensiveness invites more criticism, Mm -hmm. right? And it becomes a sort of cycle. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like stonewalling invites? So this is kind of how I explain it to couples. Like, think about it like this. You start out um, eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Somebody brings in criticism, so they up the ante. This partner isn't just going to be like, well, let me meet you here. They're going to say, well, like, now I feel bad. So let me surpass, like, yeah. let me one-up you. Let me get defensive and then let me throw a criticism back your way. Mm-hmm. And then this partner is like, well, I don't like being down here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let me criticize you some more and let me maybe get a little defensive. And they keep going tat, tit for tat like that. And it, it, the ante keeps getting upped. And then this partner gets flooded, Mm -hmm. says their body, not even their mind, their body says, this is way too much for me. Mm -hmm. This isn't working for me. This doesn't feel safe. Yeah. Uh, So this partner says, I need to tap out of this. Like my, I don't feel safe. I don't feel okay in this situation. So they remove themselves, whether it's physically or mentally and emotionally, They remove themselves, but I think to this partner who's staying up here but may not be quite flooded yet, but is probably like an inch away from it, I think a lot of times it feels like, well, this jerk's ignoring me. Yep. So I'm going to yell louder. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get more contemptuous. I'm going to get more defensive. And like, I think contempt is pulling out the biggest guns. Yeah. Right? And I think contempt... uh, can really come out when one person stonewalls. Mm-hmm. Um, and this person just is left kind of hanging because they're like, well, my needs are so unmet. I'm so dysregulated right now. Yeah. I'm so bothered right now. Like, I'm going to up and up and up until this person reengages. Right. But what they're not realizing is this person's in no physiological condition mm-hmm. and in no mind state to really be able to reengage. Right. So they're feeling ignored, they're feeling abandoned, they're feeling left alone, which is triggering for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. and the cycle continues until it reaches a point where you exhaust yourself, you give up, it's time to go to work, it's time to go to, you know, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. and you part ways until you calm down. So that's sort of what the cycle can look like, and how the horsemen play off each other as you use them in an argument. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Not pretty. Not yeah. pretty. And uh, I know I've seen this in session. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you have also. And you can see how, like, uh, shaken up and dysregulated people feel. But then how physiological self-soothing can really, really help them. And we're going to get yeah. in, into that. Absolutely. So let's talk about that. So what to do instead of using the horseman, right? So... Um. Going back to episode one, my favorite takeaway, I statements. I love I statements. So I love I statements. We're going to go horseman by horseman. So for criticism, the way to get your need met in a healthy way rather than criticizing your partner is by using I statements. Mm -hmm. So use I statements to talk about your feelings, your needs, what would help you. So instead of criticizing and saying, you never help me with the garbage. You always make me do it by myself. You're so selfish, blah, blah, blah. Say, hey, I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed by having to handle the garbage by myself every day. It would really help me if you could alternate with me or come with me or mm-hmm. do something, you know, to join me in that. Totally different way of approaching it, but the same message. It invites a compromise, right? Mm-hmm. And another thing to add to, like, an antidote for criticism is... Think about, like, when you start out with a criticism, 
-hmm. Are you starting in a nice calm manner? <laughs> Probably Conversation not. Conversation that's rational and stays at a nice even level? No, like when you start with a criticism, you're upping the ante mm -hmm. from the get-go. You're starting out harshly. Yeah. Um, if you can ask yourself, what am I feeling and what do I need and what am I trying to express instead of starting out harshly, you're starting out cool, calm, collected, and you're much more likely to express a genuine mm -hmm. thought, feeling, need as opposed to start harshly yeah. and invite a tit-for-tat cycle of uh, criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and ultimately stonewalling. So you want to keep in mind, like, if you can soften that startup yeah. by using those I statements and asking yourself, what am I feeling, what do I need first, mm -hmm. you're really helping for things to stay at an emotionally manageable level. Yeah, definitely. That's a really good point. Um, what do you think for defensiveness would be the great way to replace that? Well, defensiveness is, it's not me, it's you. Right. Right? So I think that, like, organically, the antidote to that is to say, well, like, maybe it's a little bit me also. <laughs> You know, to almost like bring yourself off of that pedestal yeah. and and take a little bit of ownership, take a little bit of accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's like a huge way to wave the white flag to say, well, this, this was my part in it. Yeah. And I always tell couples like, if you don't know what to take ownership for, like take ownership for the fact that you got defensive and say mm -hmm. it in a different way. Yeah. Like, just doing that is already waving enough of a white flag to say, mm -hmm. like, I want to shift the direction of this conversation. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't have to be a huge thing. That's true. Yeah, it can be the tiniest, tiniest piece. Yeah, and I always tell people, like, go for small. Yeah. I feel like, like, we're not in Texas. Like, it doesn't, nothing, <laughs> things don't have to be big. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. go for small, like, take yeah. take accountability, take a little ownership for, like, a small emotionally mm -hmm. manageable thing. Just wave the white flag. Uh, because, I don't know if you've seen this, actually, I'm probably sure you have, but mm -hmm. um, a couple comes in, they're talking, and then one person goes, well, fine, it's all my fault, mm -hmm. and you're totally innocent, and yeah. it's all... That's not no. the antidote to defensiveness. No. That's contempt. Yeah. Yep. Totally true. That's like being a, a contemptuous martyr. Yes. You don't want to be a contemptuous martyr. So just a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's a great suggestion. Um, for flooding or for stonewalling, right? So stonewalling is a sign that you're flooded. Uh, what do we do? You have to take space. There's no other option. Once mm -hmm. you're flooded, you got to take space, at least 20 minutes, to do something to physiological soothe your body. Um, we talked a lot about this in episode one, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, it's taking space in another room and doing something other than sitting and ruminating in your head about what was just talked about, what mm -hmm. made you angry, what your partner said, what you're going to say when you get back out there. Read a book, watch TV, take a walk, take a shower, play with your dog, do a mindfulness app, do a meditation, go exercise. I mean, anything that mm -hmm. will shift your mind's focus from the argument to something else. I always like to tell uh, people that are likely to flood, and I think people... Um, become really good at uh, identifying it. Like mm -hmm. uh, we do some biofeedback in session where people put on the pulse oximeters and they kind of learn uh, how their body feels when they're there. Um, but I always tell people to have that repertoire of go-tos, to not wait until you're flooded yeah. and then say like, should I read a book? Should I go for, right. oh, like have that preemptively ready for you. So if you know you're going to do like uh, a meditation off of YouTube, have that meditation saved to your like yeah. home screen. Uh, if you're going to do a progressive muscle relaxation, okay. have that link like ready. If you're going to read a book, know what book you're going to read and where you're going to go and what that's going to be like. Just because like when you're in a flooded state, it's overwhelming. Yeah. You're in a true overwhelm 
and you don't have the mental bandwidth to go, hmm, what would be the best meditation? Let me, let me Google and yeah. like, you're not in that uh, rational calm state. So mm -hmm. it's really good to build that repertoire of tools when you are in a rational calm state. Yeah. So that you have them really readily available when you need to use them. Absolutely. You're not in the, in the mindset to make rational decisions. Mm -hmm. So you have to plan ahead. So this is a really important one. So if you find yourself stonewalling, make sure you have that ready to go. Mm -hmm. It's going to make a big difference. And I think there's a ton of apps that are mm -hmm. really, really great. I'm a big believer in like having an app on your phone ready mm -hmm. to go. You just pop in your headphones and yep. you're, you're good to go. Agreed. And then we have contempt. What contempt is, as Marina said before, is you are feeling your needs are so incredibly unmet in that moment that you're taking out the big guns, right? The biggest guns. The biggest guns that you have. So if you're feeling that your needs are super, super unmet and that's what's putting you in that space, the best thing to do is talk to your partner about your needs mm -hmm. and what you're needing and what you're expecting and how you're feeling, mm -hmm. right? Because in contempt, you're very like you, you, you. Mm-hmm. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. Why are you like this? I should have never been with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a very finger pointing, very um, projecting on your partner. But really what you're trying to do, again, you're using a bad communication tool to get to try to get to like a really valid goal. Like what you're trying to say is I'm hurting in this moment. Right. I need something in this moment. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have a, a, an unmet need. I have a, a, an unmet feeling. I have yeah. something that needs validation. If you're able to just take that little break, to take that little second mm -hmm. and ask yourself, how am I feeling? What do I need? Mm -hmm. And to really verbalize that to your partner instead of saying you, 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 from your pedestal, so it's more like a you, 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 um, that really, really shifts the tone of the conversation. Yeah. And also, it lets you actually express your feeling, your need. It lets you externalize your feeling. And, you know, I love the saying, if you can name it, you can tame it. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to express your feeling, you're going to feel a lot more control of it also. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I think another piece with contempt, if you're getting to the point of contempt, you're probably flooded also. Yeah. So everything that applied to stonewalling about taking space and doing something for 20 minutes to calm down, if you're finding yourself being contemptuous, apply the same techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, contempt is really big guns. People, mm -hmm. the people that preemptively jump to contempt and the people who actually, I, I'd say, um, this is, uh, tell me if you see this, but people who preemptively jump to defensiveness and preemptively jump to contempt, that speaks to a relationship pattern where they for a long time have not felt heard and have not felt like their needs have been met and have felt attacked. Yeah. So they're probably like living in a state of a little bit of... Mm -hmm dysregulation and flooding and that's a really important like if yeah. this is resonating with you right now if you're like wow I walk in and I look at my partner and I'm defensive yeah like yeah. that's a really big sign that you really need to ask yourself how am I feeling and what do I need and put that out there and if you're coming in and you're saying why don't you ever do this for me? Why do you have to make me feel this way? Like, what, what's wrong with you? Why are we even together? Like, again, pause and ask yourself, what am I feeling and what do I need? Because that is such a sign of the fact that, like, you have a really unmet need. Yeah. And you have some really unmet feelings. But a lot of times, like, people are really good at identifying stuff their partner isn't doing, mm -hmm. but they're not so good at naming what that feeling is. And when you're able to ask yourself that question, you're able to reduce that preemptive defensiveness and contempt that's mm -hmm. really, really damaging. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
imagine what it's like to be the partner. Yeah. That's getting defensiveness when they're like, well, I didn't even say anything. Right. I didn't even do it yet. You know, it's it's having, it's it gets in the way of giving your partner the opportunity to do it differently. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you expect what you've always gotten. So if mm -hmm. anyone starts to make a change, you don't even get the chance to get the change mm -hmm. off the ground because everything's almost pre-decided in mm -hmm. your head because of the cycle. And realistically, if that's, if you're listening to this and feeling like, yep, that's us, I would recommend taking it a step further. It might be challenging to break that on your own, and that's where a really quality couples therapist or relationship coach can help you individually mm -hmm. or individually as a couple um, break that pattern. Because mm -hmm. when it gets to that point, that's very, very ingrained, and, you know, it's important to break that. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the four horsemen. There's one other piece that we did want to talk about, which are trigger words. Mm -hmm. So these words that... Everything could be going in an okay direction, and then one of these words gets thrown out, and it can quickly derail things. So I wish we had feedback live from you, because I would love to ask what people think that these trigger words are. I do that in session all the yeah. time. It's really funny. Yeah. So if you were here, I would ask you, but you're not. So we'll share with you what they are. So the first one, I'll let you do the first one, because the second one is my favorite. Okay, well... The first one, I think for a lot of people, is triggering from their childhood. Mm. Because when you're a little kid and your mom says this word, all of a sudden you feel like you're on the witness stand <laughs> and you have to prove yourself. And when you're a teenager mm -hmm. and your mom says this word to you, again, you feel like you're yeah. on the witness stand and you have to prove yourself and it's not about like... Mm -hmm. Uh, what is actually genuinely going on for you or what um, may have happened or how you feel. It's really about, like, am I getting it right? Am I, am I like, living up to the hypothesis? Am mm -hmm. I hitting the key points I need to hit? So that magic word is why. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what happens with why is why feels very accusatory and interrogative. Yeah. Um, right? Like, yeah. why is not, like, tell me your story? Why mm -hmm. is not, let's, let's converse and let, give me a little more insight into your internal world. Why is, I have a hypothesis, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna corner you until you get it right. Yeah. So, why is definitely a use with caution. Mm -hmm. And what I always tell people is, like, people use why in place of tell me more about that mm -hmm. or what was it like for you when mm -hmm. or um how did that feel for you or can you help me understand this more mm -hmm. you know like when we're talking about feelings and when we're talking about getting to know your partner and getting to know their emotional world um I think getting to know their genuine story is so important and why doesn't always produce that right tell me more or tell me what that's like for you or tell me right invites a, a person to share their experience mm -hmm. why I, not so much yeah and I mean I'm just thinking of an example so if I were to say to you um you know it really upsets me when you greet the dog before you greet me right when you come home mm -hmm. And you were to say, why? I would immediately feel like what I said was wrong, stupid, they don't get it, um, dismissed, all in that moment. A little defensive, A little probably. defensive, for sure. Like, I have to explain myself. I have to explain mm -hmm. why that's important to me, why I'm asking for it. And my inclination would be to say, what do you mean, why? Mm -hmm. Right? What do you mean, why? Why are you asking me? That's a stupid question, mm -hmm. you know, and you could see how it could spiral from mm -hmm. there of something that starts very well. Mm -hmm. So instead of why, tell me more about that. Help me understand. I'd like to know more. Share with me. Mm -hmm. Little change. Um, <laughs> my favorite word, which comes up a lot when people, they're on track, they're communicating well, they're validating their partner's feelings, and this is how it always comes up for me, right? Like a partner just shared all this really important stuff and their spouse 
was like, okay, so I'm hearing you say that it upsets you when I greet the dog before I greet you. It makes you feel kind of left out and you want to feel like a priority. So that's what I'm hearing from you. And I, I really understand. I understand why it would upset you when I greet the dog first. But, <laughs> and I just shake my head and I go, ugh. Because but is like taking a Sharpie and drawing a line through everything you just said before that. It's like, never mind, just kidding. So it negates everything you just said. When you say all these wonderful things and then you say but, it makes your partner feel really dismissed and really invalidated. Even mm -hmm. though you did all that great work and you communicated so well. Mm -hmm. So my advice that I always give is summarize, validate, period, space, and then share your point. Don't say but, say mm -hmm. I understand where you're coming from. Take a breath and say, I feel da 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 da, -da. Just a different, totally different experience. Mm -hmm. It is. It makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, stop the run on sentences. Yes. You know, like you, you don't, you're trying to express two different things. Give each thing its own sentence. Mm -hmm. Take that period pause. Let your uh, partner really hear mm -hmm. uh, what the validation and then shift gears to talking about your uh, feelings you don't need to undo yeah in order to express your stuff again unfortunately I think this is one that's ingrained in language and it's almost like you have to um, just pay attention and train yourself to get out of the mode of using mm -hmm. but in this way yeah and I think for a long time, the cheat for this was replace but with and. Yep. Which I think works. Sometimes. If you, sometimes, if you're able to do it, mm -hmm. I think people tend to find it super awkward. <laughs> and I think some people use it with the intention of but, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So I'll hear, you know, I understand what you're saying and da 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 da. And... <coughs> This is all the stuff that I think that's more important. <laughs> mm -hmm. And becomes almost a little contemptuous. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. It does. So you have to be careful with that. I'm a big fan of the period pause continue. I'm a believer. <laughs> so those are your trigger words. So try not to use them. So we have the four horsemen. We have our trigger words. These are the don'ts. And we don't want you just to listen to this. We want you to integrate it into your relationship today and start sharing it with your partner. So to make that a little easier for you, we are making available to you a really great graphic straight from the Gottman Institute with the four horsemen and the antidotes for them. So this is a little cheat sheet that you can use to keep it present in your mind. As we talked about last episode, keep it on your fridge. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to go in your fridge. You know you're going to see it. So it's a really nice common area, neutral area to put it up and keep mm -hmm. it around. So you can download that on our website, simplygreatrelationships.com slash 004. Definitely go get it. My bonus tip on that is with that one, uh, I always tell couples if you're going to put it on your fridge, if you want to like extra reinforce it, if you have kids, teach it to your kids. Oh, yeah. Because this is a great life skill. Yeah. And teaching it to your kids adds... Your kids are very good at keeping you accountable. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll be like, Mom, you're using... <laughs> um, so I, I always think that's a really great way to, you know, to learn it is to teach it to someone. So bonus tip. Uh, so let's talk about takeaways. Uh, what's your biggest takeaway from today? Oh, my gosh. My biggest takeaway is probably probably the tendency to be defensive. My tendency, right? My tendency mm -hmm. to be defensive and my tendency to go back at that. So just like, again, revisiting that for myself mm -hmm. and knowing that that's something that I have to be aware of and I have to work on. Um, you know, every time I think about it or I hear about it, it sort of brings that back to the top of my mind. So I think that is a takeaway for me. <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to have to piggyback on your takeaway because yeah. uh, I was thinking about that too. Like I think that is like uh, keeping defensiveness in check is mm -hmm. like a work in progress. Yeah. 
there is no like okay and then I'm there and then I'll never use it again I think it's such mm-hmm. a like innate and inherent kind yeah. of thing within us that yeah like refreshing and talking about this now I'm like okay so now I'm gonna make that extra um like an extra awareness into keeping that in check and just know that that's my one mm-hmm and know that sometimes, uh, you know, if I'm not in the best mood or mm-hmm. if I'm tired or if I'm cranky, like, yeah. I do tend to hear things maybe in a, a little bit more of a critical way than they're meant to be sure. sent out. And that defensiveness isn't really going to get me to where I want to go. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's key for us. And we'd love to hear what you identified with as you heard about the mm-hmm. horsemen. If there's something that really stood out to you where you're like, yep, that's me, leave it in the comments. We'd like to know if you're on team defensiveness like us or if you land somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's all for today. So we give you a lot of don'ts, things to be aware of, and ways to combat them in a healthy manner. So be sure to take these tips and start doing them right away. Um, We'd love to continue the conversation with you in our private Facebook group. I can't talk anymore today, let me (laughs) tell you private Facebook group where we're going to hook you up with tips, tricks, and live streams exclusively for our members. So you can join at facebook.com slash groups slash Simply Great Relationships, or you can go on our website, simplygreatrelationships.com, and just click the link there. We'd love to have you. So.